we've heard of cholesterol, this molecule which is absolutely essential for life, but have you heard of fake plant, fraudulent cholesterol, imposter cholesterol, phytosterol? So this is what's in seed oils and plant foods, and this is molecularly very, very similar to actual real cholesterol. It's just got a bit of a tweaking on molecular side chains, and it can actually be absorbed in small quantities by the body, but because it is different, it doesn't have the same biological function, and it gets incorporated into red blood cells, which, by the way, the highest concentration of cholesterol in any cell membrane in the body is in red blood cells. So red blood cells take it up. And if red blood cells take up this fake plant cholesterol because you're consuming too many plant, you know, seed oils, so on and so forth, it actually damages them. There's clear evidence, and this has been studied, that when you increase the phytosterol content of red blood cells, they become fragile, less deformable, they turn over quicker. So that's why if you had a diet high in seed oils, you could actually see a paradoxical lowering of your HbA1c. Now, I know not part of your question here, but just while we're talking about, so if you have a HbA1c, what do we do? Well, I, I would recommend cross-referencing it with what I consider to be the gold standard for glucose measurement, glycemic assessment, which is a 24-hour or a continuous glucose monitor. And they are absolutely beautiful. So that's real-time measurement, you know, wirelessly going straight to your phone. You'll see in real time, it's like what we call the election night worm, you know, which political party is winning in that seat. You actually see your sugar trace in response to whatever foods you're eating. And if you've got great glycemic control, you will see this. Just a couple of points, though, that is often overlooked on continuous glucose monitors, they do not measure the concentration of glucose in the blood. So, and this is often people will say, oh, you know, my sugar goes high, I have a shower, when I exercise, my sugar's going way up. And it's like, uh-uh, your sugar's not going way up. Let me explain what's going on. So you've got the little probe from the 24-hour monitor, and that sits in what we call interstitial fluid, not exactly in the blood. So what happens is the blood is flowing around, and it's delivering glucose molecules, and some of those glucose molecules are escaping and going into the interstitial fluid. So the interstitial fluid reading of glucose is dependent also on two factors. One of them is the concentration of glucose. The other one is the speed of blood flow. The greater the blood flow, the greater the delivery of glucose to that sensor, which is why if you have a hot shower, you vasodilate, you open up your blood vessels, you increase the blood flow, it looks like you're getting a spike in sugar. You're getting a spike in blood flow. Same when you exercise, you're increasing your circulation, you're increasing the delivery of glucose to the sensor. And that's why there's not always a direct one-to-one -one, uh, relationship between the finger prick blood glucose, which is more accurate, and the continuous glucose monitor. But the mm -hmm. continuous glucose monitor will tell you if you've got stable sugars. And if you've got stable sugars, you're sitting fairly pretty. Yeah, I totally agree. And there's a long list of things that can falsely lead to an elevated A1C. There's a, there's a long list of things that can lead to a falsely mm -hmm. depressed or lowered A1C. Uh, chronic alcohol intake can actually give you a falsely low. A1C, there's a long list that anybody can look up. And so when I see a carnivore, uh, and I don't, I don't see this in, in people eating a uh, ketogenic diet. It's really only in carnivores or, or ketivores who are just almost carnivore, 95%. But I'll check a, either a fructosamine or a glycated albumin. And invariably, even though the A1C is a little bit elevated in these carnivores, the fructosamine or the glycated albumin is stone cold normal which I think is another good way. And I love your reticulocytes. That's an excellent way of looking at this to see how many new uh, young blood cells are out there in the circulation. Why are you having to create so many of those? Well, it's because the degraded red blood cells that, that have the plant sterols, they're being preferentially broken down and destroyed by the spleen and other, other parts of the body because they're improperly made. I think that's an excellent insight.